evening, everybody. I would like to call to order our township business uh, agenda meeting uh, for May 19th, 2015. Ms. Lucina. I wish to make the following announcement to show compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act known as Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of New Jersey 1975. Notice that this meeting was given by adopting an annual schedule for the location, time, and date sending copies to the Scotch Plains Family Times, the Star Ledger, the Courier News, posting the municipal building, and filing a copy with the township clerk within seven days following the annual organizational meeting of this body. If everyone would please rise for the question of the five meetings. Insurance. 
uh, it originally was stated to um, slated to be on um, April first. So the first quarter was never a question. Uh, I decided when I became the manager to take a, a look at this program to make sure a few things. One, I, I've mentioned this before. I wanted all our employees to make sure that they were in a position to make the right choices for them and their family insurance, particularly health insurance, is too important to have a rush to judgment as I saw it. Second was that our unions, the two unions that represent uh, workers in this township, uh, had not officially signed off that the state insurance program was going to be as good or better than their existing plan. And that was important to add the, that agreement, which I did achieve when I got here. Uh, their sign-off, both the PBA and the Public, Work, Public Works and Recreation Union, to uh, have that sign-off. So I thought that those were two significant things that needed to be worked out before moving to the, uh, the State Health Benefits Program. Once those two uh, items were achieved, I thought it was prudent to make this recommendation to this mayor and council that we do move over and July 1st, we will be moving over. So I wanted to clear up that misinformation that uh, has been distributed about the timing and the process that it took for that. The second thing um, about the QPA, we were very fortunate in this town that our CFO is a QPA and was willing to take on that additional role at no cost to this township. What that does is give us better leverage in uh, bidding and buying of uh, services and products and Mrs. Majewski was, was uh, very good to take that up uh, as a responsibility with no additional compensation. The ordinance seemed to be changed because the previous, a few managers previous to me, what was in fact the QPA, and at the time, Mr. Marion had the ordinance changed, the manager had to, had to be a QPA, and since then, uh, that has not been the case. So I felt it was prudent to tidy up that ordinance to make that, um, that the manager and the, with the consent of council could appoint a QPA. Thank you, Mary. Thank you for clarifying that once again. Thank you. Um, I just want, I want to make sure that Mrs. Perkins would be here for the remainder of the evening because I wanted to address some of our other concerns, but I'll do so at a later point in the evening. Mm -hmm. Created K 
Kids in the Kitchen, a cookbook with recipes designed for children with allergies, which teachers can use in their classrooms. Samantha, stay standing. Erin O'Connor, can you stay standing as well? Can you stand as well? Good. Erin O'Connor has earned the highest award in Girl Scouting, the Gold Award, and has been and is being honored also at a ceremony on May 26, 2015. For her Gold Award project, Erin created a driver's education curriculum centered around organ donation. Her goal was to make teens aware of the importance of organ donation box on the New Jersey State Driver's License. She was able to do this by providing her informative presentation to the Scotch Plains Fanwood High School Health Education Department to include in her driver's education curriculum. She also posted it online to a teacher's resource website to make it possible for driver's education teachers across the state to access this as a classroom lesson. Caroline Ringel. Caroline has earned the highest award in Girl Scouting, the Gold Award, and is being honored at a ceremony on May 26, 2015. And for her Gold Award project, Caroline organized and held a Veterans Gallery Walk at St. Bartholomew the Apostle Church during Veterans Weekend. She also interviewed local veterans and family members of veterans to gain their information and photos, compiled what she learned and put them on display. The gallery was viewed by St. Bart's parishioners, friends, and families of the veterans, and the local community, as well as St. Bartholomew Academy students. Caroline recognized the importance of acknowledging these brave people who have and continue to serve our nation and serve to inspire us all. And last but certainly not least, what I say is the hardest thing, <laughs> Abigail Fasasica. Abigail Fasasica has earned the highest award in Girl Scouting, the Gold Award, and is being honored at a ceremony on May 26, 2015. And for her Gold Award project, Abigail selected the Boys and Girls Club of Union County, where her project was to enhance and strengthen the learning environments of both the kindergarten classroom and the library. Abigail secured donations of supplies, materials, and small furniture to refurbish these rooms. In addition, she secured donations for edu educational toys and games. With her group of volunteers, they were able to refurbish these rooms. Finally, she created a family game night to help the family and children to help increase family and child interactions. Abby created a blog about her Gold Award project journey and her experience to inspire other Girl Scouts. So ladies, now, therefore, be it resolved that Mayor Kevin Glover and the Township of Scotch Plains congratulate all four of you for having attained the coveted Girl Scout Award, and we encourage all of you to continue to make a difference in the community now and throughout your life.
One more time.
whereas approximately 900,000 law enforcement officers serving in communities across the United States, including the dedicated members of the Township of Scotch Plains, and nearly 60,000 assaults against law enforcement officers are reported each year, resulting in approximately 16,000 injuries. Since the first reported death in 1791, more than 20,000 law enforcement officers in the United States have made the ultimate sacrifice and been killed in the line of duty. And whereas the names of these dedicated public servants are engraved on the walls of the National Law Enforcement Memorial in Washington, D.C., the names of fallen heroes are being added to the National Law Enforcement Officers this spring including 117 officers killed in 2014 and 156 killed in previous years. Whereas the sacrifice and service of all officers killed in the line of duty are honored during National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund's 27th annual candlelight vigil on the evening of May 13th. The candlelight vigil is part of National Police Week, which took place this year from May 10th to May 16th. And whereas May 15th is designated as Peace Officers Memorial Day in honor of all fallen officers and their families. So be it resolved that Mayor Kevin Glover and the Township Council of Scotch Plains has formally designated May 10th to the 16th, 2015 as Police Week in the Township of Scotch Plains and that we publicly salute the service of law enforcement officers in our community and in communities across the nation. And this will be presented to the chief, I believe, when he returns tomorrow. Thank you. Well done, well done. Next on our, uh, agenda, on our agenda is public hearings and final adoptions. Uh, first, we have Ordinance 2015 uh, 006. And uh, let me ask uh, Mrs. Cena, can you read the ordinance uh, by title? An ordinance establishing salaries and wages for deputy fire chief and technical assistant. Mayor, I move that the public hearing and this ordinance be opened. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, would anyone like to address the council uh, with reference to this ordinance? Are there any comments from the council regarding this ordinance? Hearing none. Mayor, I move that the public hearing be closed. Uh, all is, is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Mayor. Mayor, I move that this ordinance be adopted on second and final reading and be advertised according to law. Is there a second? Second. Please call the roll, Mrs. Mrs. Cecchio? Aye. Mrs. Giovanella? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Mayor Glover? Aye. Uh, next, we have an ordinance 2015-007. Mrs. Hina, can you read this ordinance by title, please? An ordinance amending the zoning ordinances of the Township of Scotch Plains by rezoning premises commonly known as Township of Scotch Plains Zone 1 and 2 and rezoning premises commonly known as Terrell Road, Scotch Plains, New Jersey. Deputy Mayor? Mayor, I move that the public hearing and this ordinance be opened. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, would anyone like to comment uh, or address the council with reference to this ordinance? The very fast around the building. Thank you. Thank you. Is this the, the property that's uh, immediately adjacent to the, the middle school? I believe it is. And yes. Is it R1 now? Yes. And what is it going to be, Council? P. So oh. it's, it's going to be it's going to be owned by the school system. It is owned by the school system. Thank you. So the zoning is not conform with the ownership. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no one else coming forward. Uh, are there any comments from the council? Or any sort of Hearing none, Deputy Mayor. Mayor, I move that this ordinance be adopted on second and final reading and be advertised according to law. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I move that this, the public hearing be closed. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Deputy Mayor. Mayor, I move that 
Deputy Mayor. Mayor, I move that this ordinance be adopted on second and final reading and be advertised according to law. Is there a second? Mayor, I move that the public hearing on this ordinance be opened. Is there a second? Second. All, all in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, would anyone like to address the council with reference to this ordinance? Seeing no one coming forward, would anyone on the, left, on the council like to address this ordinance? Mayor, if you don't mind, I just wanted to address some of the concerns that Ms. Perkins raised earlier this evening when she came up to the microphone. Um, I agree with some of the things that you said, but I do think that you have some information that was incorrect. I certainly think that we could have done a better job of communicating and really getting some input, and this is an area where we need to continue to grow. But I do want to assure you, although I was not the recreation liaison, I did go and I met with the heads of the leads, all of them that would meet with me. That's why we had that separate resolution on the agenda that night. I also met with members of the Recreation Commission. Some of those conversations were uncomfortable and didn't end the way people wanted them to, but it didn't mean they didn't happen. So I think that the truth is kind of an important thing. It's important to me. We don't all always have to agree, but honesty goes a really long way. So I just wanted to make sure that you had accurate information. The meetings may not have ended at the resolution that people would have liked, but they happened, okay? We could have done a better job. We could have met with more people. We could have lengthened the amount of time that we took to make this happen. I believe it was it is the right thing for the community, but I think it's one of these things that we've put a lot of effort in and it's become very divisive. And unfortunately, we have to move forward. But when we get up to the microphone and we'll repeat things, it becomes taken almost as um, a word of law. So so I, I, I would ask that whoever gave you that information, maybe you could go back to them and just straighten out those points or ask them to contact me because Mrs. Perkins, on this issue, as with all other issues since I've been on this council, if someone opens a conversation or was willing to have a conversation, I had it with them. Conversations that don't end the way you want to, they still happen, okay? That's it. Thank you. Mayor, I move that the public hearing be closed. Is there a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, the mayor, please. Mayor, I move that this ordinance be adopted on second and final reading and be advertised according to law. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Lucina? Mrs. Shepia? Aye. Mrs. Giovanella? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Mayor Glover? Aye. Thank you. Uh, next item on our agenda is the approval of minutes. Mayor, I would like to move. I'd like to just as council minutes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's great. It's good stuff. Um, Mayor, I'd like to move the council minutes for the conference and business meetings of March 3rd, 2015, March 17th, 2015, April 7th, 2015, and April 21st, 2015. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, sure. uh, next up is our manager's report. Mr. Arbella. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I want to first um, just report and give an update on the TV outage. I recognize that Sunday evening there was a disruption in our TV service and uh, immediately contacted our uh, TV um, um, person, Bob Dufailer, who handles our TV station, and started working on 
of the issue. It seems like there was a power disruption in the area and perhaps that um, fried our surf, if you will. Um, so I just want to give you an update. We are going to get this, this meeting is being uh, taped and we'll be up on YouTube just as soon as we can. We're trying to update the public uh, as, as most efficiently as we can on our website and Facebook pages. But there, um, there remains a disruption. I was able to work through um, with Mr. Du Thaler uh, and our CFO a solution. But I think we're going to be getting a, uh, a piece of equipment to replace the one that was fried. Quite frankly, this um, this piece of equipment was slated to be replaced in, in time as a grant was received from Comcast, and um, we've, we've, we thought we had uh, sufficient time to um, stretch out and. Uh, Unfortunately, with the power hit that we took, it, um, it knocked it out. So I apologize for any disruption in TV service. Uh, we are updating the website and the Facebook page as quick as we can. We'll get the YouTube um, copy of this meeting up just as soon as possible. Um, on to better news. Uh, this, this weekend, there's a lot of festivities planned that I want to uh, make sure the public's aware of the Memorial Day concert that's happening Sunday evening um, at 6.30 on the Fanwood Green. We have a nice partnership with Fanwood on this concert. It's been very successful. This is the fourth year, and I give, um, I give Ralph Cecchio a lot of credit uh, for his work and his leadership in the, uh, on this great new mayor for soliciting you know, many, many donations along with uh, Mr. Cecchio. And uh, that should be a great concert. I haven't missed one yet. I don't intend to miss this one. I invite the public to participate uh, in this concert on Sunday night, and then certainly for uh, the parade and the festivities that start at 10 o'clock at our gazebo here. Uh, you might notice the, uh, the tremendous beautification that's going there. I give Councilman Cechio a lot of credit, uh, along with the, the men and women in our um, township for the work that they're doing, beautifying that area, and it's only going to get better as those flowers um, blue, so, so a lot of credit for that. The parade will be terrific, and it's scheduled to kick off at 10.45. Um, last weekend, we started our farmer's market, which was a, a great success. The vendors are terrific. I saw the deputy mayor there and, uh, buying some, some fruits and vegetables, and um, that was fun. And every Saturday, we'll have that event uh, moving forward. Um, the other big thing that happened this, this past weekend was the inaugural Arts and Crafts Fair which to my, to, to my look at a terrific success for the first year. Uh, um, and it was just lovely to see the, uh, the, the grounds being populated with arts and the kids there for uh, uh, their crafts and, and all the rest. And, and the wonderful artists who presented their uh, products. It was, it was great to walk around and, and then walk through the farmer's market. And, uh, that's just an indication of what this council is doing is trying to draw up business people into our downtown area, and I think that's going to go a long way. A couple other uh, updates I want to give the, the council, mayor, and the public. Uh, the new website for the Township of Scotch Plains is uh, under development. Uh, we expect to launch on July 1st. The departments are working uh, with our developer to uh, provide that content and information to move from one website seamlessly to a new website. I think the public will find this uh, much more um, better opportunity for communication and a better presentation of information. Uh, we have an upcoming event on the Rabies Clinic, uh, May 20th at the Southside Firehouse at 6.30, so uh, those are free inoculations so people can come and get their, um, their pets taken care of. Uh, the concert series starts uh, July 9th with a doo and cruise night, so we're kicking it off with the, with the Bang, really, it's going to be wonderful to have a car show uh, as well as the doo show for the first uh, concert on July 9th. So make the public and write that down. It's going to be fun. And then for the weeks following, will be the rest of the concert series. Uh, Friday nights, beginning June 12th, will be Friday Family Night Movies in the Park. And I give the mayor a lot of credit for this idea. And uh, really, I think that's going to be wonderful for families to come out. Uh, the fur and, he, and the mayor's working very hard to offset taxpayer cost for this and developing a lot of funds coming in to offset the cost of sponsorship. I'm happy to say that the library is partnering with us for the first um, event, June 12th. 
for Big Hero 6. It ties very nicely with the library's plans for their hero campaign for this summer. So it's a great partnership. Uh, Michelle Willis is off to a terrific start at the library, taking leadership there. And I'm delighted to, to work with her and to see her partnership. I want to update the council, and Mayor, you're well aware of this, but the public should be aware of this as well. The zoo property was quite the hot topic over the beginning part of this year with the, uh, the dirt that was there and piles of dirt and, and issues around there, and um, all to help speed the process on the Concord with American Order being that up. And there's a lot of reasons for why that um, dirt had been put there. But I will give this mayor a lot of credit for, um, for pushing uh, Montana Construction and American Water uh, to make an additional contribution uh, to this township for the use of that property. And through his efforts, um, they have donated or used as a, uh, maybe not donated, it's not, maybe not the right word. Um, certainly for the renting of the space, um, they're contributing $20,000. And without this mayor's uh, direct involvement, that, that uh, likely would not have been possible. So I give him a lot of credit for that. The township has $20,000 to use on that site of the zoo property to make that an even better park when we uh, all decide the direction of that's going. I want the, the, uh, the residents and the people in the audience, people who have seen this, to know that that would not happen. Because it was tremendous inconvenience for the residents in that area. And this, uh, they're going to get a great park uh, in place of that. Summer hours are starting in the township uh, June 18th. Uh, Thursdays. Um, will be open uh, until 7 o'clock. Summer through Labor Day, September 4th. Uh, Fridays, the township will be open through noon. Uh, there is uh, spring cleanup information that's been distributed. I want to just alert the public that uh, for Section 1, the deadline is May 28th, Section 2, June 4th. And if you have um, some items you need to get rid of, there's a lot of information on the website. Uh, you can pay for it either on a community pass through the web township's website or by dropping a check off here we'll be on the list and pick up your, uh, your stuff you're trying to get rid of. Um, there was a, a robust discussion at a conference meeting on the potential move to uh, dispatch for a police department and fire department. Uh, I will uh, give credit to uh, council Councilman Jones and Deputy Mayor Joan Ella, we did um, have an opportunity to go over to Westfield to look at their um, site of Councilman Jones' uh, suggestion. Uh, and I believe they had an opportunity to head on over to the county site. I'll encourage the rest of the council that did not have an opportunity, perhaps at this point, to go visit that site uh, in the county. And uh, if you need to look at the Westfield site, I'm sure I can bring you that as well. Um, Leaf and Branch pickup. On the north side is completed. Um, we're targeting uh, tomorrow, uh, I'll say the end of this week, for the south side of the old dock. But um, the, the Public Works Department is working very hard to uh, pick up all that um, debris and leaves and gumballs and all the rest, and they're, and they're on, on schedule to do that. All potholes are being um, filled in as complaints come in, the DPW is responding. Uh, they're still working every day. In the harsh winter that we had in uh, many um, streets and locations. Uh, <coughs> but if, if residents have questions or potholes or need attention for, for this particular issue or for any DPW matter, they can call 322 6700 and extension 243. Uh, the township is going out, went out for a RFP for a to update our color plan for affordable housing. Uh, that will be awarded tonight, I presume, uh, since the bids came in, it's on the agenda, and then we'll start working on updating our affordable housing plan. Uh, also, I'm going to recommend to this council and go out for a bid uh, for a request for a proposal for a downtown plan to start working on our downtown plan, uh, get some, uh, some professionals in that can uh, lead that process and that will be my recommendation. I'll work with our clerk to, um, to get a proposal out in the paper, and we'll start working on that for your consideration uh, moving forward. I want to also update on 
just two projects on our current systems winding down. Um, the Shading Rest roof uh, is nearing completion, um, and that was a significant project for this township. And there's a few um, small items that need to be taken care of, but that is drawn to a close. Um, and I'm happy that we're making progress there, and then we'll start talking about phase two and working with this council to discuss the rest of the uh, Shading Rest uh, restoration. And as well, the Brookside Pavilion is out to bid for the concrete work that will finish that project as well. So we're trying to put a finish on a few of those projects that we're lingering and move forward. Um, last but not least, I had the opportunity um, just last night to attend the fire department drill at the fire academy, and uh, it's quite impressive. And the next time we have this drill, I'll make sure the council and you, Mayor, are invited to participate in all that many members of council want to attend and, and couldn't, but um, we'll make sure you're on, on the list for the next time. But it's quite impressive to see them drilling and preparing for an emergency that could happen in South Plains to give them the men and women of our retirement public And that um, concludes my report at this time. Thank you. I thought that was one long sentence. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, I, like, I would just like to uh, add to your report, maybe just fill a couple of the blanks. One, uh, that TV 34, yes, is all there. And if it was something that we could remedy quickly with an item that's on the shelf, we would have done so. But uh, it is not an on the shelf item. Mm -hmm. uh, this piece of uh, gear that needs to be replaced. So we're working diligently on trying to have a piece of equipment built. Uh, I understand it off the shelf um, uh, piece of electronics. Uh, the other thing uh, we spoke about the new one group, and I'd just like to add the uh, your contribution there is that yes, we will be having a car show beforehand at Wild and Conference on. We will be closing Park Avenue uh, that night beginning at 5 o'clock, and we'll be till 9 o'clock, and we will already have much interest on a lot of, of classic you know, vintage cars, uh, folks that are going to be displaying their vehicles. So that's something we've never done before, tying the do in with the classic car and closing the street. So that's going to be exciting. I'm going to hit the next three items, you know, uh, because of the comments together, because we talk about funding for these things. You know, while we have money to put aside for the concert series and our cultural arts budget, uh, we do go out and solicit contributions from individuals and from businesses. And presently, uh, the concert series, which is considerably less than it was last year, by at least two thirds, and I think we'll have a spectacular concert series, is already been 50% funded through these kind of donations. Uh, the movie uh, night that we're presenting, again, uh, I believe we're up to almost 50% contributions for that. So that's money coming back and taking burden off the tax credit. But most importantly, the Memorial Day concert, something we started uh, four years ago in my initiative, uh, had been then fully funded through donations. Today, it continues to be every time uh, to put on that show, which is a fabulous show in memory and uh, uh, reminds us of the true meaning of a world that it comes from private citizens and from companies. We're just pleased by their participation and contribution. And it's important everyone know. Uh, the Mayor's Gala took place about a couple of weeks ago. And I will tell you that I'm proud to say, most of us attended, uh, that it was probably the best Mayor's Gala we've had in recent memory. It was uh, well attended. I think the largest crowd we've ever had. And uh, I would be remiss in not getting credit to the people who really were the workers behind the scenes that made that gala so uh, much fun to have attend that recognize some of our one most wonderful citizens and organizations and uh, you, you've heard them mentioned before but the folks who are on the mayor's gala committee need and should be recognized Irene Bartel, Mandy Jacobson, Lillian Wiener, Sue Deniza, Maureen Latosta, Kimberly Nix, Sylvia Taylor, my First Lady Joanne Glover and Valerie Brasso. Uh, they just made it all happen. And anyone who's there knows it was a spectacular event which raised some very important money for some very noteworthy causes. So we thank them all. And we hope they'll come back because uh, I didn't say this last year, but I'm saying this is probably the best committee I've ever worked with in eight years. 
so proud of that. The other thing I want to comment on is the Watson Craft Show, and uh, throw credit to the lady chair of that for us on the cultural arts, which was Leah, Leah Asbido. It was something she and I talked about, it was something she was very passionate about, and I will tell you, we would not have gotten done without her. And obviously with the help from the rest of the folks who serve on our cultural arts committee. But Leah was spectacular, she was out there displaying art, along with one of our very own artists in town, uh, some fellows sitting in the audience, Fred Rossi, uh, who had some amazing artwork uh, photographs uh, that he was sharing with the public for a price, but certainly exceptional uh, artwork that he brought uh, to the Arts and Press Show. We thank him for participating. Um, I think I may have gotten everything there. Uh, just you were back with those clarifications. So, hope that helped. You. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Madam. I have a question. I'm going to ask you about Hidden Meadows. We have been talking about this, um, and I know that we've spoken with the attorney and we've spoken with the engineer, but um, I'm, I'm feeling the frustration. You're feeling the frustration, I know, of the residents on that street who are paying, you know, 25 plus thousand dollars in taxes a household. And uh, you know, just so that the public is aware, we were unable to assist those folks with plowing this year because their street hasn't been completed. Um, the final house was possessed, was, um, I shouldn't say possessed, was, uh, and that was awful. Um, the final house um, was became occupied uh, right after the holidays and, and the residents there have been very good and very patient. Um, but are becoming increasingly concerned and, and I just would want us at this point to start to look into what avenues we can really take on their behalf because we've, 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 tried, we've tried to be good um, facilitators of conversation and it doesn't seem like that conversation is happening or if the conversation is happening and I know that you've been wonderful about reaching out I haven't seen that street being plowed or plants or trees being going in so whatever we need to do in working with our attorney to make sure that those residents aren't underserved. Um, I think it's time. Yeah, um, Deputy Mayor, I spoke with the gentleman today, and I intend to meet with him next week um, to continue our conversation. I expressed my uh, frustration with him, and you know, he's he's telling me that they're they're on track to, to paint that street next week. Yeah. We're looking forward to taking ownership. And, Maintain it the way we maintain it, and, uh, and the tree will be the next step. And then I'll look at to see if there's any penalties that can be applied. I'm not sure there is or isn't, but uh, we'll look at it. When I just look at the amount of time, your your time working that has been devoted to contacting the builder, and you know we have our township engineer. There's been so many hands that have put so much time into something that just shouldn't have been. You know, and I, I think that we have a lot of the same builders coming into town to do work, and obviously growth is always a good thing. But we need to develop relationships where people understand that there's an expectation. And when we have residents of this township paying that kind of tax dollar, that the township will put everything that we have in our power to make sure that these builders are doing what they need to to meet the needs of our residents. Because we had that one snowstorm, you know people were frantic. They thought they were going to have several feet of snow and have and not be able to get off their block. It's 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 unreasonable, and it's not the township. But if, if if you know to do business in this town, you have to be good to our residents. So um, I have just really one report. Okay, next we are finished with the manager's report. So next we have. So um, I want to apologize. I had a scheduling conflict, another meeting uh, to attend, and I was not able to see the live burn, I believe they call it, uh, last night. But I really just stayed so consistently proud of our fire department. And I know that they also will be having um, a, a service for their members on the uh, on Memorial Day morning. You know, I'm sure we'll be busy getting to our couple different places. But it's, uh, it, it's, it's a good thing. It's a really good thing. Um, and I just also wanted to say, um, to really thank uh, Joe Timko publicly. Um, we, uh, when we, when we went to be trained, uh, Eileen Lamar and I, uh, for um, the Environmental Commission, um, we, we received some information 
um, there at that training that there was a grant that was coming to. It was really only a couple weeks um, between when, when, we, when we saw the grant's application and when the grant could be applied for. And to the credit of uh, Mike Bryan, who's in the uh, audience, he has come to us to come to the, the uh, up to the council a couple times and talking about the nature of the nature trail. Um, that was something I know the council member Chucky had a concern about as well. And there's a beautiful trail there, or really what has the potential to be a beautiful trail there at Brookside. Um, and I, I just want to thank Mr. Timko for doing everything he possibly could to get that grant application in. Um, on time and really put together a very well developed application and we're just keeping our fingers crossed and hopefully we get some funds there and that we can do some more good work at Brookside now that we potentially have a pavilion. Potentially. Yes, so you can thank you for me, please. And that's it. Please, yes, we do. Uh, the Scotch Plains Family Municipal Alliance is proud to announce that Mrs. Kathy Sheilas is the 2015 Volunteer of the Year. Mrs. Shields is currently a member of the General Committee and served as the chairperson of the Scotch Plains Family Chemical Dependency Committee for over 10 years. She is known for her outstanding leadership to ensure the Think Purple campaign is delivered to the schools and community in a timely manner throughout the school year. She makes it look effortless, even though there are 10 schools and numerous community and organizations that participate. In the last year, she has broadened the community visibility of the Think Purple Week by adding new lawn signs and banners in multiple languages that reach many aspects of the community about underage drinking. So congratulations to Kathy Sheilas and thank you for all your hard work. It's a well-deserved recognition. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Please. Uh, Recreation Commission, the small prize, morning time slot, the first session is now full. All other slots and sessions still have availability. Summer Basketball League, registration began on Thursday, May 8th. Open to kids entering third grade for ninth grade. Season runs end of June for August. Fee is $85. Girls softball pitching clinic. New pitching clinic session will start in June for girls softball players in grades third through eighth. Details to be announced after Memorial Day. For the seniors, senior transportation. Transportation for residents who are senior citizens is available and provided free of charge by the township. To register or for more information, please contact our dial a ride number at 908-322-5151. Spirit of Philadelphia Cruise is sponsored by the Senior Advisory Committee. Trip date is scheduled for August 19th. Includes buffet, cruise, and DJ. It is $45. Registration begins June 30th. For more information, call 908-322-6700, extension 223. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, the next two items on our agenda is the uh, consent agenda and the uh, other new business items. We will be incorporating the other new business items into the consent agenda and moving them mass. So with that, Please. Mayor, I'd like to move the uh, new business consent agenda resolution number 2015-100 through resolution number 2015-112, as well as the other new business, um, which, which would be items number 15-97, straight through uh, re resolution, yes. Resolutions, resolutions. Yeah, I figured not the ordinance. So just down to resolution 2015-120. Is there a second?
that we could address that. Yeah, I mean, is that uh, imminent or is that uh, is there some problems that have to be addressed before that can happen? Yeah, th there are some issues with the ceiling because of the many years of um, water damage that's happened in there. So the ceiling in the big hole uh, needs to be replaced. Uh, and I'm working with our public works director and uh, supervisor to come up with some goals to figure out how to test that. But it will probably be um, still um, off limits for you know, use for another couple of weeks. Oh, uh, before the end of the summer, I would expect. Oh, I'm hoping in the next you know, two to three weeks we'll have that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Mr. Curry, I spoke not to embarrass you or to your bride here, but we can count you to thank you as well. I'm all members of the State of Shady Recipe for all the work we've done. And your great efforts in seeing that this really was deserved. It is deserved. With some humility, because I know you're one who believes that you didn't do it alone, so I will state that categorically, but you did have a good team surrounding you. And, uh, you know, we've done good as a community. Thank you. Scotch Plains. I've been a uh, resident of Scotch Plains for 37 years and um, I live on the north, north side of Scotch Plains, the little the portion that is on the other side of Route 22. And um, we love it there. We're at the foot of the Watchung Mountains. It's lovely. And, um, and I um, uh, over the years, I guess I've paid $200,000 of property taxes, very well spent. My two children, children were educated here. Um, you know, the snow, everything has been handled very nicely. Uh, but I'm concerned now with the Wawa, uh, that the proposed huge Wawa that's going to be built right in the area that is our main conduit to Scotch Plains. Uh, if the traffic there changes, it's already, you know, rather dangerous. I remember a man was parked at a light minding his own business and someone crashed into him and killed him mm -hmm. from Route 22 years ago. Do you remember that? And uh, someone recently was hit, of course, in that area. Because we live there, my children haven't been, you know, I, I never lived in Route 22. Even when my son needed a bus to New York, I would drive him across. You know, just because, not taking any chances, who's falling asleep at the wheel, whatever. But um, I love the town. I love where I live. Uh, but uh, I, you know, I think the traffic, changing the traffic pattern there, especially there are school buses that go through a number of times during the day because it's a federal law that if they're going over an interstate highway, they have to be bussed. So uh, that, that that is to be considered. And then also I've seen um, over the years uh, Mountain Avenue that there's a buildup of parking. People that are taking the bus into New York. You know, the train is not the only way they get there. You know, we have a lovely fan, you know, the family has a lovely train station there. But they take buses into New York. And now people are parking on Mountain Avenue, making it look rather congested. And I'm sure the homeowners aren't too thrilled. So I was, I just came with a suggestion that I think that that parcel of land, which is dual zoned and a little tricky, one part is residential because of the lovely people that live on Mountain Avenue, and uh, they certainly don't want the value of their houses impacted uh, by having a Wawa, 24-hour Wawa there. Um, it lit up. So that uh, I think maybe the town should buy half of the lands, okay, so they're gonna half of the lands, and you could put a municipal parking there, and we might even be able to use it for farmer's market here, would certainly bring in more traffic, might make more money. And also, I heard you want to start a community garden. You can use part of the land for a community garden. So we have trees around it, and I think it might work out very well. And why not invest in the town? It's the first part of Scotch Plains people see as they come to Scotch Plains, before they see all the other gas stations, etc. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for coming out today, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for your time. <coughs> the next slide is anyone else Scotch Plains. First of all, it was an honor to see the Girl Scouts 
commended for all that they have done. It's, they set an example for all of us to be honest, to have integrity, and to do something for our fellow man. I noticed that uh, we're recognizing the police a little bit late, but could I make a suggestion because you recognize the EMTs? Nurses Week was May 6th through the 13th, and nurses are probably the people who most of you have hands-on and direct contact with. Nurses are special, not because I was one, but nurses are the ones who are the ones who take care of you, who put their hands on you. Doctors can give orders and EMTs can keep you alive, but the nurses are the ones who give you the little TLC. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we recognized two young men for their um, recognition of their recycling efforts. And I would love to meet with you, Mr. Mirabella, because I really think this town could do so much more. Accolades to those young men, but maybe we could even consider a fair on what you could do with recycling things. It's wonderful. It really is wonderful. One water bottle that is recycled will power your TV for three hours. It will power your computer for two hours. One water bottle, and I could go on and on, but I'm not going to do that. Um, the flowers around the town are beautiful. Thank you, Mrs. Cecchio, and all of your team. It does look nice around the gazebo and all the flower pots. I haven't heard much more about the community garden, but I like that lady's suggestion of not having a Wawa, maybe having the town invest in some of that property for something constructive. Um, on a sad note, the senior bus was broken, so the seniors did not get to their meeting yesterday to hear this wonderful entertainer who sings like Frank Sinatra. Uh, it's nice to recognize seniors, but our bus really, need, we need to have a backup. Seniors <coughs> need to get out. They're in the house all winter long. Now that the weather's nice, it's nice to get them to a, a meeting, an event. Uh, as you said, the river cruise, I'll be going on that. You have to get out and you have to socialize. 30 seconds. 30 seconds, okay. And hopefully the radio station is being used more now because it wasn't when the Luke Oil fire was. And I know Mr. Del Sordi was concerned because his wife and his children were concerned. I was concerned because I live not far from that also. It's a station that has to be utilized for emergencies. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Uh, seeing nobody else, then council would like to make a comment before we close the session. I just wanted to say that I believe when we announced the date, June 16th, my husband's birthday, we, I know some other fine folks who have, um, some of my favorite folks actually, who have birthdays around that time, um, one of which would be our, our much beloved father, John Palladino. Sure. And it's a very special, significant birthday this year, so maybe we can present someone something on that date because it's, it's right up in I believe his birthday is either the 15th or the 2nd. Okay, thank you, thank you,
thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I for one, I know this is not supposed to be torn as a given, because, you know, following up with a very good nice comment there, that we usually don't do this, but I, for one, get very confused when I'm out of town. Like, I have to get out of my car, I can't get away, the credit card goes, but I lift that lever, right? Because I'm not used to it. Now, listen, it's one of the few things we get for all the taxes we pay, and we still have the cheapest. My son is paying four dollars and sixty cents a regular in California. I think I filled up the Costco. I'm not doing a plug for Costco for two dollars and thirty-nine cents uh, the other day for a meal. So, and they pumped my gas. So, few things that I get uh, that I truly enjoy. But uh, sorry for that. It's a joke, but you and I will debate that more one day when we're the assembly. Uh, just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding, everybody. All right. With that. Let's Mr. Marabella, it's 814. It's a record. Merry Christmas. No. <laughs> motion. motion. So a motion to adjourn so we can break the record. May I please have what's happening? We are not live, so there's no point to see it. Yeah, we do have to do it, but is there a second? All those in favor, signal by saying aye. Aye. Good night, everybody. Come out to the Memorial Day Parade and Memorial Day concert. We're looking forward to seeing you.